Welcome back to the Solar Power Summit studio. In the last sessions, we have been looking into the success elements for European green recovery and also into a 100% renewable system as a backbone of the decarbonization of our European system. Now we want to look beyond European borders and we are very happy that uh, we are cooperating on that with GetInvest. So thanks very much for the support we are having from GetInvest. I'm here with Matte Heiss, Head of International Cooperation at Solar Power Europe. Matte, so the green recovery, that's not just a European story, but it's also happening uh, anywhere else and there's green diplomacy going on. So that's what we're going to look into in this session. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Valborga. So welcome to this session about the Green Deal diplomacy and the EU instruments to promote renewable energy investment in developing markets. As introduced by uh, Valburga, my name is Matej Heiss and uh, I am Head of International Cooperation at, uh, at Solar Power Europe. And indeed, in this session, we will be speaking about what we call the Green Deal Diplomacy, the external aspect of uh, the European Green Deal. Together with six distinguished speakers, we will speak about European support instruments that can help European businesses to uh, develop renewable energy projects in uh, emerging markets, while at the same time also helping Europe's uh, key partner countries and partner countries in general to uh, enable a post-COVID green recovery in the spirit of the European Green Deal. Um, at the end of the session, we will also have hopefully uh, 10 minutes for questions and answers. And uh, so I would already like to invite the participants uh, to, uh, to listen and uh, send questions via Slido. On this slide, you can see how to access our Slido platform, which enables you to send questions, which will be displayed here in the studio. And uh, we will select uh, a couple of questions at the end of the session. We will read them out and discuss them with the speakers. So um, I now invite our speakers uh, to join us here. And I would also like to in introduce the speakers of today's session, starting with uh, Car Director Carla Montesi from uh, Directorate General um, Development and Cooperation of the European Commission, who will set the scene uh, for today's session and uh, speak about the, the Green Deal diplomacy from the perspective of the European Commission. Welcome, Carla. It is great to have you here today. Thank you. Her, Happy to join. Your presentation will be followed uh, by four presentations from uh, various support instruments and representatives of development banks, starting with uh, Eric Kalea, Vice President Energy Africa and Asia of DEG, the, the German Investment and Development Bank. He will be followed by Doreen Lobik, fund manager at FMO, the Dutch Entrepreneurial Development Bank. Welcome, Eric, and welcome, Doreen. Followed by Jean Denis Collin, regional investment manager at Electrify. And the last presentation from a support instrument will be done by Michael Franz, team leader of Get Invest, a European program to mobilize decent decentralized renewable energy investment around the world. And last but not least, we will also have a presentation by Stefano Mantelassi, Vice President Energy Solutions Initiatives in Charge of Africa at ENI, who is also the Chairman of Solar Power Europe's Emerging Markets Workstream, who will speak about Solar Power Europe's perspective, Solar Power Europe's and the solar industry's priorities when it comes to the Green Deal diplomacy and uh, European support instruments for renewable energy development outside of Europe. So without uh, much further ado, I would like to give the word to Director Montesi. Carla, over to you. Thank you, thank you very much and a good morning to all of you. We start by saying that less than one year ago, the Commission presented the new growth strategy for Europe, the European Green Deal, the agenda for the economic and the social transformation. It's an agenda that is about the planet, but it's also about the growth and the people. 
Now, of course, the Green Deal is first for Europe, but the ambition, as was already mentioned in the introduction, goes beyond the EU border, because considering the global nature of the challenges, of course, we need to work with our partner countries outside the Europe. So the Green Deal will guide, in some way, our European and external action, our work with our partner countries for, for a truly global, green and a fair transition. And of course, doing this, we will use all our instruments through diplomacy, policy coherence and, of course, our reinforced international cooperation. Now, we know that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, completely changed the landscape after just the adoption of the Green Deal. Of course, this absolutely not mean that uh, the Green Deal is no longer valid. To the contrary, it's clearly our blueprint uh, for implementing a green recovery model, what we are calling in, in, at the global level build back better and invest in a sustainable economy for the 21st century. As you have surely listened, we have the president of Underline that has launched the idea to have a global recovery initiative linking investment and debt. We all knew, we all know that the recovery will require unprecedented investment. If you just look to the European Union, we will be spending more than 1.8 trillion just to help reboot our economy. The message for the highest level is clear. We need to do this recovery, but we want to promote a green, healthy, inclusive, resilient recovery. Also by linking the between green and the digital transition. And to do this, the only way is just to have the private and the public finance that will be fully aligned with the SDGs and the Paris Agreement. Now, um, as you know, uh, of course, taking into account the pandemic, we are supporting our partner countries in a very uh, important way through a Team Europe approach. Team Europe, you know what it's about now, it's uh, linking member state action with our financial institution, our development financial institution action. We have succeeded to mobilize 36 billion euro to respond to the COVID crisis. We are continuing this work on creating Team Europe. So we are exploring the different Team Europe initiative in line with the ambition of the Global Recovery Initiative. Of course, what we want is to have the European industry that be part of this team to accelerate the global green transition. Now, focusing a little more on energy. So just to say that the energy transition will be at the heart of our European global recovery effort, will be at the heart of the European Green Deal inside Europe, but also outside Europe. Now, looking to Africa, as you know, since the last March, we have a new communication towards a comprehensive strategy with Africa that is proposing to launch a green energy initiative. Of course, this green energy initiative is built on the work done with the industry, uh, the work done by the high-level platform for sustainable energy investment. And uh, let me say, let me thank uh, Solar Power Europe for their active engagement and uh, for their support in the excellent work that we have done together uh, last year. This African European Green Energy will have two overarching priorities. Contribute to higher share of renewable and to increase the African people getting access to affordable, reliable and sustainable energy services. This will be the two key mantra for our intervention in Africa. But also looking to Latin America, to Asia, to Caribbean region, 
let me say that our focus will be to support the green energy transition. So we'll intend to use, as I said, all our instruments will be the diplomat that the, our diplomacy, but also our internal cooperation just to promote investment in power generation based on renewable energy resources. We will try to green the energy mix of our partner countries. And the intention is clearly to advance, to accelerate project that will providing access to clean and reliable energy services, including off-grid solution, including the clean cooking technologies. Now, already said, we will do this by strengthening our policy dialogue with the countries, by providing technical assistance and the capacity building, and by supporting green energy investment through the blending and through the guarantees. You know from now very well that we have launched the European Fund for Sustainable Development, the EFCD. It's a new generation of financial instrument based on risk sharing, on guarantees. The area on energy will be a key important area for which we will use this new financial instrument. And uh, of course, you will be listening during the presentation our first European guarantee for renewable energy, EGRE, that it's uh, the financial the instrument, it's the facility where we partner with uh, EIB, IFD, CDP, and the KFW. But I want now just to mention that, of course, this is the first guarantee, but when we look to the next multinational financial framework, there will be a significant increase in funds that are earmarked for the European investment facilities to support the climate action. We will have a new external action guarantee of up to 60 billion of euro that, as you know, we hope will allow us to leverage half a trillion of investment from the private sector. Our ambition, of course, that these funds will be used in line with the SDG, will be used in line of the Paris Agreement. So an important message for us today, taking into account your intervention as private sector, is clearly that we are touching with the Green Deal, with the global recovery, a great importance to everything that is the sustainable finance agenda. This can be the new European Union taxonomy on investment, standards, disclosure regulations. But uh, we hope that by the end of the year, for example, we will have clear criteria that determine which economic activities truly help achieve our climate goals. But the intention is, 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 uh, is um, clear we want to use all financial package in order to be in full alignment with the Paris Agreement. Now, let me say that, of course, your role is uh, it's huge uh, in, in achieving the new ambition of the European Union. I would like to reassure you that we are listening. We are listening to the voice of the industry and the private sector. We are happy for the approach that is taken with the Renew Africa initiative. And uh, let me say that at this point in time, we are, of course, uh, in line with the proposal of the Renew Energy Initiative. We are advancing our talks on front-loading the technical assistance support with the two institutions, EIB and the CDP. And of course, we really want to cooperate with the industry in establishing a one-stop shop coordination platform really to succeed to enable better the link with um, the link of the private sector with the various financial instruments uh, uh, and, uh, and the government. So it's really very important for us to improve this link with your role, private sector, 
with the role of financial instrument and will be listening today the role and the action of the, our financial institution with also the role of the government to promote the renewable energy investment and improve, of course, the business climate. Um, so we want to work with you. As I said, the European Union industry expertise will be fundamental for us in order to succeed our ambition. And let me just end the saying that, of course, I look forward to work closely with the European Union industry and with the Solar Power Europe in bridging the energy gap and accelerating the green energy transition that is our key global objective for the European Union. Many thanks, good luck for your work and over to you. Director Montesi, thank you very much for this uh, concise yet comprehensive overview of the Green Deal diplomacy. And it is very encouraging to hear about the level of ambition of the European Commission and the European Union when it comes to uh, promoting the, the, the energy transition globally, also beyond uh, Europe's borders. And also thank you very much for your uh, positive uh, feedback and words uh, as regards uh, the Renew Africa initiative. And uh, I can also reassure you that, of course, on the solar industry side, we are also very keen to and very happy to cooperate with you on, uh, on this. So um, let's move on to the next speaker. And so after this uh, good policy overview by Director Montesi, uh, let's go into the details and let's have a look at how um, support instruments uh, for renewable energy projects in emerging markets are implemented and work in the detail. So, um, Eric Kalea from DEG, over to you. Good afternoon. I hope you can all hear me quite well. Um, it's a real pleasure to be with you here today. Um, I will give you an overview of um, the mandate and the instruments of development finance institutions. Just try to find uh, if I can hear the uh, uh, the presentation. Um, let's see. Um, would like to show the next slide. Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, so DEG is part of KFW Group, um, a really large government-owned development bank, and. Our mandate is really to provide long-term financing to the private sector in developing countries. Um, so basically, we are the link um, between the private sector in developing countries and also funds being raised in Europe and also, as Carla was mentioning, the global green transition and the European Union's um, mandate to uh, help support this transition um, the development, the European DFIs, um, development finance institutions such as DEG, we have been playing, and I'm very sure that we will be playing an important role in this uh, transition, as we are um, very well aware what is going on in the developing countries um, where we are working in, and also have access to um, our own funds and also additional funds provided by the European Union. Um, DEG is, is headquartered in um, Cologne in Germany. We have uh, 22 offices uh, worldwide in developing countries and um, our own balance sheet is around uh, 9 billion euros um, and we are working in around 90 countries um, and um, every year we commit around uh, 2 billion euros of new projects. Um, our real mandate and our role is to provide funding that is not available in the local markets. Um, so especially for energy projects, um, really long-term funding is required. So if you imagine there's a, um, an independent power producer, say, or a, a solar power plant, um, really requires extremely long-term funding um, up to 18, 20 years. And very often this funding is not available in the local markets and the role of um, development finance institutions is really to provide this kind of funding. Um, in addition to this, we also provide um, risk capital, so um, in form of equity or mezzanine. And we have also um, other products, especially 
pro programs for smaller um, projects or um, also support programs, technical support programs, um, where we have very dedicated funds. Um, we provide funding for all different kinds of sectors, but today the focus is on energy and infrastructure, and energy is really one of the focus sectors that we, we have in our portfolio and where we try to provide long-term funding to um, relevant um, private players in these markets. Um, just going to go to the next. Yeah, this um, slide gives you a good overview of um, the variety of our instruments. So it starts on the left side uh, with very secured loans and um, um, where we get certain guarantees uh, and then maybe uh, subordinated loans where we take a higher risk and get less guarantees and let less securities and then also um, equity participations where we become basically a shareholder of certain companies that we finance. Maybe it's, it's important to, to mention that we provide um, the majority, the large, large majority of our funding um, alongside market-based terms. So that means our real role is to provide and to, to bridge the funding gap that is um, um, basically existing in these markets. As I mentioned before, very often long-term funding is not available. So we can, because we have very stable balance sheets and a stable uh, funding, um, we can provide this long-term funding. However, we don't provide a concessional terms. And for a lot of projects, that's not really required. Um, so there we, we provide market-based terms. Um, and, and, and that, as I said, is, is the majority of our funding. Um, we also provide certain other services, and that's mentioned here in the blue boxes um, at the lower side of the, the slide. So we can syndicate um, funding. That means that we arrange funding for a project with other banks. Uh, we offer business support services. Um, we, of course, um, promote corporate governance um, and have very high standards in terms of corporate governance and also um, environmental and social standards. And we provide a, a large network to our clients and partners and also yeah, knowledge about industries and sectors. Um, for um, high risk projects or early stage projects, we have very specific programs. And that's mentioned on the right hand side, on the um, bottom side uh, of, of the, the slide. Um, as DEG, um, we have the program Africa Connect, and that is for investments in Africa um, with European links. And there we can take even higher risk than we normally do. Um, and we have for very small projects and early stage projects, we have a specific program called DEG Upscaling. Um, with this program, we have funded a number of also um, off-grid companies in, in Africa, um, so solar home system companies or also um, commercial and industrial uh, solar companies um, and um, and really could kickstart and be a kind of a pioneer investor in, in, these, in this sector as well. Um, we also have a large program called Develop PPP, which provides um, funds to um, pilot projects and also supports the training uh, measures and programs of certain projects and, and companies. And of course, we have access to um, further support mechanisms and instruments, uh, such as, for example, the, the EFSD guarantee um, from, from the European Union, so where we can take higher risk in projects um, and, and actually catalyze investments in, in these projects as well. Um, very important to mention is um, the strong network of European development finance institutions. Um, you see here um, on, on the map of Europe that effectively every or most of the, the European countries really have their own um, development finance institution. And between these, we have a very strong cooperation. Um, in a lot of transactions, we, we join up together and um, provide joint funding. And there's also um, an important um, instrument, a vehicle, um, which was funded from and uh, from or which is funded by 11 um, EDFI members, um, and that's called Interact Climate Change uh, Facility. Um, with this, we are able to provide larger funding amounts to energy projects, 
and between um, the uh, French development um, um, bank Proparco and the Dutch development bank FMO and DEG, we also have a so-called friendship facility agreement, uh, which also facilitates actually the yeah the provision of of long-term funding um, as through a very efficient process. Try to get on the next slide. Uh, not sure. Ah, here it comes. Yeah. Um, I want to give you just two examples of our um, projects. One is a large wind farm in Kenya that we funded, um, I think now it's already three, four years ago. Um, it, it's a 310 megawatt wind farm, um, very much outside and off road. Uh, close to Lake Turkana um, at the time when it was actually developed. Nobody really believed that this could uh, really work out. It did. And uh, we as DEG and a number of other European development banks actually supported this project. And in, in the meanwhile, it is completed and it um, provides um, very stable and reliable um, energy to the Kenyan grid. And um, it's a real uh, success story for, for Kenya. and. Um, the promoters and the banks that finance this, this project. Um, and in this project, we provided a, um, a mezzanine loan, so a subordinated loan, where we took a, a, a higher risk than normally in the senior loan. Um, on the next slide, um, you will see an example outside Africa, it's in the Dominican um, Republic, where we um, arranged the funding for um, a large uh, solar plant. 116 megawatt, and um, we arranged funding of 124 uh, million dollars, um, and it's the largest plant in this uh, country. And it's just an, another example of um, what we are doing and uh, what we are able to do. Um, and maybe to mention that, um, as you have seen on the um, slide with the, the different um, uh, European development finance institutions, um, there are a number of those, and every um, institution has probably their own approach, um, but very many of them are really focused and geared toward um, energy and renewable energy projects. And, um, and so there, there are a lot of possibilities to fund these projects um, by talking and, and contacting um, the European development institutions. Yeah, last, last slide is just the contact details. And um, I think that's all from my side. I think we have another a few other pro uh, interesting uh, presentations uh, on the hand. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, for this good overview and also for demonstrating the big variety of existing instruments and facilities. Uh, not going to take time. Uh, I would like to hand it over directly to uh, Doreen Lobik from, uh, from FMO. Doreen, uh, would you walk us through FMO's uh, services and offering? Um, yes, happy to do so. Uh, thank you very much. Also, Eric, for your presentation. I have clicked now on the slide, so I'm... Oh, it's going the wrong way. Let me see. Oh, it goes too fast now. Um, so, yeah, thank you. My name is Doreen Loewig. I've been working for FMO for uh, 15 years, and actually FMO, the Dutch Development Bank, uh, is a very similar uh, company to uh, the German Development Bank Eric just uh, presented. Um, uh, FMO was established in 1970, so we uh, had our 50th anniversary this year. Uh, half of, of our shares, of, uh, or 51% of our shares, are from the Dutch government, so we're a public private uh, uh, structure. Um, and, and we are active actually in, in three um, um, uh, sectors. We focus on these sectors, so that's the agri, food and water, but it's the whole value chain, including forestry actually, uh, energy, and there I'll uh, speak about a bit uh, more, uh, uh, well, uh, after this slide, and financial institutions, and financial institutions is the financing of banks in developing countries, emerging markets, but not only banks, but also leasing companies and microfinance. And as a development bank, we try to track 
uh, our impact and for all our investments we do that uh, on the basis of the SDG 8, 10 and 13 and in in uh, uh, SDG 8 we try to track the jobs that we uh, support by financing uh, projects. Um, the reduced inequalities uh, uh, SDG 10 is our focus to try and, and finance also in uh, the uh, least developed countries, so the more poor countries in the developing countries. And SDG uh, 13, Climate Action, uh, we have developed a green label, so to track our climate-relevant investments, and that would be both in climate mitigation, which is very often in, in our renewable energy, but also in climate adaptation. Um, oh, other way, chop shop yeah um yeah maybe some figures and there again you will see some overlap with uh, with the german development bank um so we are relatively a large bilateral development bank so we have a committed portfolio of 10 million of 10 billion sorry uh, these are the figures of uh, end of last year and there you also see that we made a profit last year um, I must admit that due to COVID this year, this first half year, we made quite a substantial loss because the value of our equity investments has decreased. Um, and, uh, and we have taken uh, a number of provisions on our loans because uh, we, we are yeah, pretty sure that some of our loans will not be paid back in full. Uh, so our um, uh, loss uh, this half year was uh, 280 million uh, euros, but we are a very solvent bank, so we can manage that. And we are indeed set up to take these type of risks. Um, and um, yeah, um, uh, continue working in our countries. Um, we are now 700 people. We're most of most of us are based in The Hague, the Netherlands, but we do share an office in Johannesburg with DG. So our friendship facility is indeed also in collaboration on the ground, um, and we have a very small office in Kenya and in Singapore. Um, almost 30 percent of what we do here. Uh, almost 30% of what we do is in the energy sector and we, uh, like uh, DEG, provide uh, loans and equity um, and mezzanine uh, uh, products uh, and we do that most in hard currency but we can also provide in local currency. Uh, in the energy uh, space, um, we provide all types of uh, financing and as you see, solar is still limited but it's uh, very much growing currently um, maybe to give you an idea this was again last year uh, we also have like the eg uh, financing that we provide from our own balance sheet and we have some government funding that we use uh, for the more risky countries or the early stage projects uh, or uh, difficult countries where, for example, the off-taker is not financially sustainable. Um, um, and, for example, currently we're looking at a number of mini-grid uh, investments and we would typically do that from the public funds. And the public funds come, um, uh, until last year was uh, Dutch government uh, funding, but we also have uh, a facility together uh, with the EC to finance uh, venture uh, capital projects, so uh, rather early stage companies, um, uh, and we provide equity to those. In, in normally, uh, we provide around um, uh, loans of 15 to 20 million euros, but with the venture program, for example, we can provide uh, very smaller or much smaller amounts. And uh, for example, this year we financed a company in Liberia uh, with one and a half million uh, US dollars uh, in equity. Um, and Easy Solar, the company, um, uh, is a solar home uh, uh, system uh, uh, company. 
uh, that is now expanding to Liberia and they have smaller solar home systems and lanterns uh, which they sell at a pay-as-you-go um, uh, uh, way. Um, but also, uh, so uh, we don't only uh, provide these uh, smaller types but also larger rooftop solar for example in Asia. Um, and for the people that are interested, here you see with projects, uh, we have a world map and there you can select all our investments over the past few years uh, and you can select on region but also on sector um, uh, and then you can see the uh, all the projects. Uh, there's also on our website a special page uh, for all our energy information uh, and if you want there is uh, also our YouTube channel that provides a number of really nice movies, short movies, uh, which also provides some um, examples of solar uh, energy projects, but also of the other sectors. Um, uh, maybe to come back to this part, um, the orange part, um, uh, Carla just mentioned it already to, uh, that, that we also want to, to crowd in private sector so uh, we do that as a development bank as well we try to share our loans with more commercial parties so that it becomes a uh, yeah an asset for the more commercial uh, uh, financiers or the institutional uh, um, uh, financiers like pension uh, funds um, uh, to yeah to cry them in and that that becomes an asset um, like DEG, we provide long-term finance and the shortest I think I have seen so far in the energy sector is five years, but we can also go up to 20 years as well. Um, choop. Yeah, and here I won't go through uh, to all line by line because this is a, a quite an extensive process and the process is I think the same for all DFIs, uh, so Development Finance Institutes, um, uh, but we want to uh, understand the projects that we are financing in full. So from a corporate governance point of view, uh, but also uh, from the impact that we're going uh, to, to make um, or, um, and, and also all issues that may raise during the tenor of our loan. So if we finance a project for 20 years, uh, in an emerging market, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, quite something that we want to understand. Um, and and because in some of these countries there is a lack of uh, public institutions or strong public institutions, we are checking on international best practice. And we do that on corporate governance, but also, for example, on the environmental and social impact assessment. Um, and we want to understand in full, so the financials and and um, and the ESG, the environmental and social uh, part. Um, the throughput time, and uh, Michael will maybe uh, come to that in a second, the throughput time varies a lot. So a project in energy can uh, be decided uh, on by us, on the financing, uh, in a couple of months, but it sometimes also takes a couple of years uh, before we can decide and that has all to do with the information that we're uh, receiving and also the, the quality of information. And this is my last, last slide. Uh, I just wanted to share this nice picture of Gigawatt in Rwanda. This was a project we financed in 2014 and that was partly financed then with the Dutch public funding that we are having but also uh, with FMO's funding from our own balance sheet and this actually this project is doing very well it's operational now so the funding from the government in the meantime has been refinanced to the fund uh, and is now used for new projects and and it could be used now for for example uh, the mini grids thank you Thank you very much, Doreen. So uh, in the in the last two presentations, we heard from two big development banks, DEG and, and FMO, that, uh, that participate in various um, instruments and initiatives. And uh, we saw how diverse uh, that uh, that scene is. And now in the next presentation, uh, which will be done by Jean-Denis Collin, 
we will hear about one specific uh, financing uh, initiative or facility, Electrify. So Jean Denis, tell us more about uh, Electrify, please, and and and, uh, and tell us how uh, project developers in emerging markets can benefit from uh, from Electrify. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, yes, I'm trying to get control of the process. Yeah, it doesn't work yet. Ah, yeah, yeah, it works. Can you go back to the previous? Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, Electrify um, is, yeah, it's uh, slightly uh, smaller than, uh, than the GLFMO. So, it has been, uh, it has been set up uh, four years ago as an initiative, a common initiative between the European Union um, and the, the European GFIs. So the 15 European DFI that Eric mentioned in his presentation. Um, it has been set up, um, as I said, the community initiative with the, with the, um, the European uh, Commission and European Union um, in order to, um, to, 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 to fund um, uh, a funding gap that has been identified um, for the projects that are too small or, or too risky um, for, for the traditional lenders, including the, the DFIs. So, um, so what we are financing, um, um, or we are financing or investing in projects like um, uh, overgrid projects, or as well as small IPPs um, that, don't, that don't have the, the, the size um, yeah, the, um, yeah that, that are not um, large enough to be to be financed by the by the traditional GFIs. So Electrify um, is managed by the management company of the European GFIs. It is based out of Brussels, and we are now uh, managing uh, several facilities, um, including uh, Electrify, the largest, um, Agrify. Um, there is also a risk sharing facility which is being uh, set up. Uh, which is a TNC guarantee, uh, and then there are the co-financing facilities, uh, risk sharing facilities that are EFP and ICCF. So, um, as I said, our mandate is, is clearly to be additional. So we have to be additional to the DFIs, which themselves need to be additional to the um, to, to, to the traditional uh, lenders and commercial institutions. Um, so we. Um, we, yeah, we, we provide um, instruments that are um, de-risking uh, a project or that are um, further uh, catalyzing other financiers and we will further detail it. Um, so uh, concretely, we are, we are clothing in um, other, other financiers which can be um, commercial investors as well as uh, public institutions. Um, we, we we are also not um, a, a concessional lender, so we cannot we cannot provide uh, financing at concessional terms. We are supposed to um, to act uh, and to provide financing at arm's length. Um, so we are not supposed to distort the market. Um, we are also uh, driven by by impact, so we are tracking uh, several impact indicators uh, that are the number of new connections, uh, number of beneficiaries. Um, new new renewable energy capacity uh, added, um, and like uh, CO2 emission avoidance and uh, job creation. Uh, finally, our instruments are quite flexible, uh, as you will see. Um, we invest um, tickets. Our ticket size is between half a million euro and ten million euro, uh, and we can do both equity and and debt, and everything is behind like mezzanine or um, press shares or um, so we are quite uh, innovative and flexible on the on the financial instruments so yeah there are two um, two electrify facilities there is the electrify global which is uh, 120 million available on the um, on many uh, developing countries on most of the continents and then we have uh, what we call the country window facility uh, which now has uh, five uh, different um, sub facilities dedicated to single countries. There is one for Benin, one for uh, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Zambia, and there is one regional for uh, the Pacific region. All in all, those um, country windows um, 
uh, represents 93 million uh, euros. So um, globally, we have a bit more than 200 million uh, euros to, uh, under management. And we are also now um, uh, contracting additional country windows uh, with the European Commission. Oh, sorry. Can we go back to the previous slide? Is it possible to go back to the to previous the other way? The previous again, please. Um, yeah, so here, here are the models that we are financing or investing in. So we are financing uh, mini grids. Um, most of the time, it's uh, about portfolio of mini grids, uh, solar home systems, uh, IPPs. So IPPs, we are targeting more um, small to, uh, to, to mid scale IPPs, where the, the larger ones are financed, usually financed by the, by the European GFIs. Um, we are also um, financing um, CNI, commercial and industrial uh, PV projects or, or captive power plants. Um, there as well, we are, we are doing both um, projects that are of a larger scale with one single off taker, or we are also uh, financing a portfolio of small projects. Um, and then we are also uh, looking at other uh, business models like um, yeah, uh, energy efficiency, um, uh, hydro, de uh, hydro developers. We are also selectively investing in intermediate uh, investment uh, vehicle, so um, basically funds. Um, but, but there as well, uh, we need to be additional to the other invest investors in the fund, and the fund itself needs to be additional. Um, yeah, previous slide was about um, the, our, our instruments. So as I said, we are we able to um, to do um, um, straight equity, um, mezzanine, subordinated debt, uh, as well as uh, senior debt. So up to now, our portfolio, which is uh, which is uh, 62, 62 million euro, um, having supported about twenty seven companies and projects. Um, it's, uh, so our portfolio is about 70% uh, equity and equity-like um, instruments, uh, including um, junior debt, and 30% is with the senior debt. So it's, uh, it's really on a case-by-case -case basis that we, uh, we decide to be more on the equity side or on the, the senior debt side, um, because even on the senior debt side, we can also be additional um, if, the, if the company is successfully raised uh, uh, equity with um, with uh, some some strategic investors, and then we could decide to join the round um, in order to to leverage um, the equity that has been raised. But most of the time, we are on the on, on the on the on the risk capital side. Um, so our 62 million uh, euro invested so far um, has uh, leveraged more than 200 million euro from other investors and financiers. Uh, this has contributed to the um, completion of more than one million new connections um, and the production and the yearly production of uh, 385 gigawatts hour of renewable energy. So, um, yeah, I will briefly present two case studies that uh, highlight our. Uh, additionality and what we do, uh, both are very different to each other, uh, but I think it's uh, both are a good example of what we can uh, do and how we can support the companies in that uh, business. So the first one is Redavia. It's a German uh, CNI um, uh, project developer um, starting business in uh, in Ghana. Um, so actually, what they what they do, they provide um, um, uh, PV uh, rooftop PV um, installations to uh, to companies established uh, in Ghana, uh, and it is sold under um, under a, a kind of OPEX uh, contract, meaning that the, the financing is included in the in the contract, um, making the, the the financing needs of the of the company quite high. So uh, Redavia had uh, secured um, a senior debt from. Um, from a commercial impact investor, 
um, based on a, what we call a, a borrowing base, meaning that the senior debt uh, financed up to 60% of the present value of the receivables of the company. And what we did, we provided a 2 million uh, mezzanine debt in order to, uh, to, to unlock uh, the, the senior debt. Uh, as the senior debt was limited to 60% of the value of the receivables, we are providing an additional 20% where the company is providing uh, equity for the for the balance of the 20 percent um, so there we have been able to um, to unlock and to catalyze uh, similar uh, similar debt provider um, the next one is uh, is very different uh, there we have invited we have invested uh, straight equity into a 25 million uh, dollar uh, impact venture fund uh, raised by Schneider Electric, the French uh, company. So the, the purpose of the fund is to invest into um, energy access startups in, uh, in uh, Southeast Asia. Um, so there we will, uh, we will uh, indirectly invest in, uh, in, in companies developing um, breakthrough technologies, uh, mostly focused on energy access. Um, so, uh, so it will not only uh, create new connections, but it will also uh, create new jobs uh, and new, new, new companies uh, in the region. Um, yeah, very last slide. Uh, yeah, it's about our contact details. So um, we are now about thirty um, in in Brussels. 30, thirty people are working for EDFI management company. And at Electrify, we are now 13. So, uh, and I'm a regional manager. So, we are we are two regional manager heading uh, the, the Electrify team. Thank you all for attending. Jean Denis, thank you very much. Uh, so now we got a very good overview of different financing instruments and initiative initiatives available for projects in um, uh, in Africa and also other emerging markets uh, of the world. So I'm turning to Michael Franz, team leader of Get Invest. Get Invest is not a funding instrument. Michael, what's Get Invest? How can you how can, how can you help project developers? Do you you are the one who who links the project developers to uh, to financing instruments to some extent? How does it work? That's it. That's the idea. Hello, everyone, wherever you are around the world, mostly in Europe, I guess. My name is uh, Michael Franz. Michael Franz. I'm sitting in uh, my flat here in Brussels at the moment in mobile office, like most of us, uh, I guess. Yeah, indeed, Get Invest is a different animal uh, from the others that were presented today, but it's linked uh, with them. And it's particularly also linked with what Carla presented uh, uh, earlier. But I want to start with where this came from. Um, when I started uh, working in this field about 13 years ago, it was at a different time. Uh, solar was really not where it was uh, today. I started my career actually in Kenya um working also with private sector companies there and we had a lot of developers that came to us and had said look uh, we have this business this business plan this business idea we really think uh, this can work really good entrepreneurs with different models uh, some wanted to supply industry others communities others wanted to sell power to the utility but they all had one thing in common where do i find the money for this and of course there's plenty of banks there's plenty of financiers but there's a lot of them and the modalities that can be cryptic, especially for entrepreneurs whose business is to run a business and not necessarily, you know, to speak the language uh, of financiers. So that's where we realized uh, that something needs to be done about this. Fast forward, um, fortunately, already by now, four years ago, we had a predecessor program to get invest, a renewable energy corporation program, which has now turned into get invest. Now, what are we? We are a dedicated a European. Uh, program, a European tool, European instrument, a European facility uh, that helps mobilize investment in decentralized renewable energy projects. We're right now working in Sub-Saharan Africa, in the Caribbean. We're now also now starting uh, to work in the Pacific. Uh, we run on a multi-donor platform, it's called GetPro, which is implemented by GIZ. But what does that mean? Essentially, at its core, Get Invest is a facility where you as a company, as a project developer can come and say, hey, this is this is us, uh, this is our idea. We're at this and that stage. And now we need money for this, uh, different types of money, of course. And for that, we have created an advisory facility, the so-called finance uh, catalyst. 
it's an open facility that links projects and companies with finance. We have a lot of uh, expertise in there. And with that, we are, um, um, you know, the, the linking element between those that have good ideas and those that have money. And that is actually, and I wanted to come back to this, this is uh, at the heart of the European Union's external investment plan. Uh, it's at the heart of the European uh, Union strategy of cooperation uh, with Africa to actually really make business and investment happen. And uh, that is where we have, uh, we, have, we have put this. Now, what does that mean? Um, if you are a company, uh, we have structured our support into four types. One is, if you will, the initial orientation advisory support. Uh, how do I go about mobilizing investment uh, in the first place? This is particularly useful for companies that don't have that much experience yet uh, in these you know, innovative models or, or, or markets, uh, countries. Um, the, our second service that we offer is a, really a deeper dive structuring support. Our advisors have a lot of experience on the different business models, on how to structure them, what is, what is important, what in terms of regulation, in terms of the business fundamentals, but in particular about the financial structuring. What kind of money do I need? How do I manage my finances? And in particular, financial modeling, which has proven to be really essential in order to obtain uh, investment. In addition, there is a large number of financing instruments and facilities out there. And sometimes uh, banks have different facilities that they run. Eric has presented it, Doreen has presented it. You know, and uh, there's a lot of companies for sure who don't need our support, who, who have the contacts already, who have the reputation, but then there are those who do. And then our job is to help uh, make life easier for everybody involved, including the financiers, including uh, Jean Denis here at Electrify, or so we hope, uh, in terms of uh, helping find the right type of finance uh, and the right kind of finance uh, instrument and making that introduction. But then once the introduction is made, then things get interesting because then the negotiations start. And those, Doreen said it, they can, they, this whole process can take a long time. I, 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 I'll be transparent. We have clients in our portfolio. We've had them since the first year. Uh, so since four years, we still think that uh, this can work. That is how it is. Other clients uh, can move very quickly. We took in one client who I met at a conference in Nairobi in February and uh, a Kenyan company, and uh, they already have their first finance now, uh, which is what six months, seven months later. Um, so it can it, it, it can differ, uh, really. Uh, one needs to have the necessary flexibility and hopefully also the right kind of competence. Complemented is this type of support with events, outreach events, information that we provide. We have a finance instrument database that we're currently updating and collaboration with associations because we don't see our, we're a development program. We're not supposed to be in a mature market. We wouldn't exist. Yeah, uh, but that, it's not quite there yet, and that's why technical assistance of the sort uh, that we do is necessary, can be helpful, and the work with associations towards an exit option is for us absolutely essential. And again, really big thanks, Mate, to your colleagues, uh, to everybody in the team for the good cooperation over the years for events like this, but many other activities, as you know. Last but not least, we also do capacity development in a broader sense. We've structured it that we can help with particular companies, with trainings, those that aren't ready for the coaching and advisory service yet, where a classroom style approach is more appropriate. And we can also help with regulators and with the capacity development for financiers, but that is not the core area. Our core area is really on-demand advisory support to companies and projects. Uh, JD, uh, Johnny, you had this already in uh, in, in your in your presentation. Um, one thing that I do want to stress is Africa. We talk about Africa in particular. It could be also other developing countries. It's 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 a lot of different countries, and the circumstances differ, although there are similarities. But another very important aspect is that the energy landscape is much more differentiated than it is in Europe. Uh, we have different market segments, business models. And the competence is required, the type of finance required, the process, it, 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 the type of regulation that you require, it really depends. There are again similarities, but it depends. And uh, we have the competence for the areas that are indicated here with an arrow, they overlap, they're essentially the same as Electrify by design, uh, not by coincidence, because those are the segments that are most relevant also in the, in the context of the European uh, goals and uh, and uh, objectives of european development cooperation 
Very briefly, I want to show you um, an interesting slide, I suppose, the, our results in numbers since uh, existence of so over four years. But this slide also shows the brutal reality of doing business in a way. The funnel is, is, is rough and hard. I think, personally, I think that out of every 10 ideas, only one makes it uh, to finance. Uh, in, our, in, our, in our facility, we see that out of roughly 650 applications, because these are the numbers from August, 650 applications that we've received so far, we've selected and supported 160. Right now, it's about 90, of which 45 we have by now put to the doorstep of financiers. And then we can uh, come up with this on uh, with projected impacts that represent those 45 uh, transactions. And they're across the different market segments. So look at this funnel. That is how it is. And these are. this is why we need, uh, Carla mentioned, the risk mitigation facilities. And all these instruments, they're there to both broaden uh, this funnel, but also accelerate it. Yeah? That's also a job that we have as Get Invest. Make this whole process move faster. Um, what do we have on offer for you as companies? I try to summarize that here. If you're a company, a project willing to do business, and if you are looking for investment, you can of course go straight to the financiers. That's absolutely fine. But you can also come to us and seek advice. Uh, maybe we can help you. I hope we can help you. Uh, we look at uh, applicants on the basis of certain criteria, but in a nutshell, it's very simple. Uh, our, our, our assessment is, is it realistic? Can we add value to it? And three, do we know of financing that we can link this with? And if the answer is yes to all three questions, we, we don't send anybody home. Um, that's, that's basically what we do. And even if we do, it's, it's possible to come back on the basis of an improved uh, proposition. But generally, uh, after pre-feasibility, yeah, when our advisors have sufficient material to work with when they look at your proposition. Secondly, we have a lot of information on offer. Thirdly, you can participate in events and webinars that we support. And fourth, please engage with our partners, in particular with the associations. I really think that every company should be a member of an association uh, if possible. And that leaves me with pointing you to our website, to our social media. We're very active on social media as well. And it also leaves me with a thank you for your attention, but in particular also to our donors, uh, without whom this would not be possible. Uh, Get Invest is a multi-donor uh, program. It's a truly European approach. That means that the uh, majority of the funding comes from the European Union, from uh, the Directorate of uh, Carla Montesi, uh, DG DEFCO, also funded by, uh, the, uh, by Germany, the German government uh, through BMZ, Sweden through CEDA, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, DEGIS of the Netherlands, and ADA, Austrian Development Corporation. And again, thank you very much. Please don't hesitate to be in touch with us. Thank you, Michael, also on behalf of Solar Power Europe, and thank you for your support that uh, enables us to organize such events and also it's to work awesome. with partner associations in Africa and other parts of the world. So unfortunately, yes. we're run running out of time and we still have one presentation. So I'm turning to Stefano Mantelassi, chairman of Solar Power Europe's Emerging Markets Workstream, and asking you if uh, you would be able to wrap up very quickly, uh, just um, uh, give, uh, give a very short overview of our workstream and, and also our most important priorities when it comes to cooperating with uh, with funding instruments in, in emerging markets. Stefano, over to you. Please try to limit it to two or three minutes. Yes, so thank you very much, Mate. I will be very quick. Uh, so I will start with uh, the slide. Okay. I will start with a quick overview about Solar Power Europe. Solar Power Europe uh, represents the voice of the European PV sector. We have uh, more than 200 organizations uh, with, uh, with us covering the whole value chain, as you can see in the, um, in the, figure, uh, in the figure below. Um, main role of the association is to support shaping the policy framework and to promote new economic opportunities. And the way uh, we work uh, is uh, through a work stream. We have several in the emerging markets work stream that I that I am responsible uh, uh, for is one of those work uh, work streams. Uh, 
Uh, what are the, the emerging markets for stream activities? We uh, publish uh, reports, uh, market reports, uh, technical reports, uh, uh, industry best, practi best practices. Uh, uh, we, we are active in several international initiatives and business platforms that uh, uh, that you can read. Uh, we work uh, through associations with the partnerships in several countries, uh, uh, Jordan, Nigeria, Mozambique, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Brazil, uh, uh, India, and we also participate in international projects uh, and capacity building, building projects uh, in cooperation with the uh, international institutions. And then we uh, advertise and we inform people about our activities uh, through, the, um, through our news, uh, newsletter. In terms of geography, you can see that uh, we are active in Central and South uh, uh, and South America, Northern Africa, Southern Africa, and certain uh, Asian uh, Asian countries. But uh, let, let's go into the uh, the, the, the topic uh, of our um, of our session today. Uh, in July 2020, Solar Power Europe issued a position paper that represents uh, the, the industry's uh, view um, about the, the new opportunities for the EU governments and businesses to drive the global cooperation on climate change and to lead the global green recovery after COVID-19. And uh, these opportunities are offered by the Green Deal diplomacy and by the new EU, uh, EU strategy. Uh, solar Power Europe studies have indicated that there is a lot of potential for uh, for solar generation uh, in, in emerging market in excess of 120 and 20 and 20 gigawatts. And th this is the angle uh, we come from to call on the European Commission uh, to propose ambitious policies and initiatives uh, to help uh, uh, these emerging markets to uh, unlock. And uh, in this ambition, uh, in this ambitious plan, uh, the PV industry is prepa prepared to assume a proactive role. Um, our position paper focuses on the on two uh, aspects: uh, the solar in the green deal diplomacy and the solar in the new EU strategy with uh, with Africa. In uh, in the green deal diplomacy, we have three uh, three main uh, focus uh, focus areas. Uh, the first one is the renewable energy partnerships with uh, key countries and uh, uh, and regions where the European industry and the European development finance institutions should uh, um, support uh, key partner countries in developing their renewable energy markets uh, uh, through the actions that um, that we can see in the uh, in the slide that okay uh, that you can see in the slide where um, the, the first one is uh, to uh, design and implement bankable tenders schemes and power purchases agreements. Too many times uh, in, in emerging markets we have seen projects that were coming for tender who were never built because, I mean, the related PPAs were not bank bankable and this is a, a mistake uh, to be, uh, I mean, to be, to be addressed uh, for sure. It, it's important to strengthen and uh, EU economic diplomacy mandate and promoting business to business and business to government exchanges because this creates a renewable energy culture in the emerging market countries uh, and also uh, very uh, it's, it's a good occasion to build the commercial uh, commercial links. Uh, it's important to support the, the dissemination of European industry best practices and the joint definition of quality standards based on the European experience. Uh, application of best practices and quality standards means bankability. And for projects in emerging markets, bankability, as we said, is the key, uh, is the key issue. And then uh, it's important to support the creation of renewable energy associations, which are the ideal forum where uh, industry problems can be discussed. And uh, uh, this can also represent a single voice for a recommendation to policy to policymakers. The second point for the solar in the Green Deal diplomacy is the access to financing, support to the risking and, uh, uh, and, and bankability. Uh, the risking means lowering the cost of capital which means helping projects to be to be realized 
and uh, and therefore it's important to prioritize the support to renewables across all the geographic programs of the EU, but especially in countries facing fast industrializations. Then there is the, the very important topic of uh, state guarantees. Uh, we know when in countries where the uh, the public utilities is the the single buyer buyer of the electricity and very often this single this um, single buyer or uh, bankrupt uh, it's it's impossible to uh, to have a bankable ppa unless there are state guarantees and so where these state guarantees cannot be uh, given by by the state it's important that alternative uh, financial instrument to to support are available and then it's very important to have standard contracts because because the standardization of contracts means uh, a quality of contracts which means bankability and uh, a clear example of it are the open solar contracts developed by the international renewable energy agency and the terawatt initiatives uh, with the support of solar power europe that uh, are considered the best practice for bankable contractual documentation Last point is the trade and direct investment. Uh, Solar Power Europe stresses the importance of using uh, international trade as a tool to promote the objectives of the, of the Green Deal. And uh, the, the, the specific recommended action to address this point is uh, uh, to address the trade and investment distortions affecting renewable energy investments in third countries which may be linked to public procurement, grid access, uh, local content requirements, discriminatory tariffs and market rules. Uh, to make sure that international trade and investment agreements contain specific provisions for renewable energy investments and are in line with the Paris Agreement and the objectives of the European Green Deal, it's important to support the modernization of the Energy Charter Treaty and Solar Power Europe is active on this and participates in the working group and then it's important to streamline the criteria applied by export credit agencies for solar pv and leverage the single market potential in export credit credit agencies content requirements that at present are uh, nationally nationally defined stefano may i ask to wrap up quickly because unfortunately we're yes. running out Yes, very quickly. The last point is the, the, the solar in the new EU strategy with, uh, with Africa. Um, here are the, the proposed actions or the development of infrastructures with, which are key for the development of the intermittent renewable, renewable energy. Capacity building programs uh, based on uh, uh, both on policy and technical uh, training. Uh, uh, support the local renewable industry associations and their organization uh, by means of dedicated programs such as Get Invest, streamline and optimize the grantee based approach uh, of the external investment plan with instruments such as the uh, European Guarantee for European Renewable Energy, and then support both uh, utility scale projects but also decentralized and off grid projects through. Um, through digital innovation. That's uh, quickly all from my side. Thank you, everybody, for your attention. Over to you, Mate. Thank you very much, Stefano. Stefano Mantelas, the chair of our Emerging Markets Workstream. And thank you uh, very much to all our speakers today for the insightful presentations. And I think we all get got a, a much better understanding of the European landscape to support renewable energy investments outside of Europe in, in emerging markets. And uh, so with this, uh, I would also like to thank our audience and hand the word back to uh, Valburga Hemmetsberger, our CEO and host of today's conference day. Thanks very much, Mate. I can only conquer what you said. I learned a lot about financing instruments and what uh, Get Invest is doing in order to, to help these investments uh, in countries outside of, uh, of Europe. Uh, we are uh, at this point in time only a couple of minutes away from our startup awards which are going to start in 30 um, approximately 15 minutes now because we're running over time at 3 30 brussels time so please stay tuned or join us again for our startup awards the startups we've chosen are already running warm and they're eager to present to you their business ideas and we are happy to, to receive them and learn more about innovation in Europe. Thanks very much.